So our engine is most of the way back together and it's painted. The last few things to do are put the balancer on, the water pump, the front end accessories, get the good spark plugs and the coolant temp sender in, a couple accessories, fill it with oil and pre-lube it. First, we'll get the balancer back on. I'm just gonna reuse the old balancer. If you really care about an engine, it's a very good idea to just get a new balancer when you rebuild it like this. But uh, I've looked at this one pretty close and the rubber seems like it's in pretty good shape and we're just gonna run it. So I've cleaned up the snout and the inside and outside surface of the balancer. And what you don't wanna do is use the balancer bolt to install it because at the start of the process, you're pulling pretty hard on just a few threads. The ideal solution is to tighten a nut on a stud in there but uh, this is a long bolt, and this long bolt and some washers is gonna work just fine. I'm also not installing the balancer pulley or the water pump pulley yet, because it should be easier to get this into the engine bay without those installed. So we'll put some oil on the snout here. And oil inside and outside the balancer. And we'll set it on there, and then we'll start tightening that bolt and hopefully everything lines up. If it doesn't, you can get the center of the balancer pretty hot with a torch, and then everything should slide together. Okay, let's start tightening this. Once it starts getting tight, we're gonna have to hold the crankshaft still. So let's take care of that right now. What we'll do is thread in two flex plate bolts Put a screwdriver between them and jam it up against the engine stand. So then, as we turn the crank tightening that balancer pulley, it's going to jam the screwdriver up against the engine stand here and not allow the crank to rotate. Let's get to tightening. You definitely want to do this by hand because you need to make sure you can feel when this bolt bottoms out or if anything gets hung up or cocked sideways or anything funny happens, really. Once it's most of the way on there and you switch back to the original bolt, if you really want to, you can use the impact. It's getting tight. I'm just gonna take this bolt back out because I think it might be bottoming out. Okay, now that it's pretty close, I'm just gonna use the original balancer bolt to get it all the way on. We're still gonna space it out a little just to make sure it doesn't bottom out and because the pulley isn't on here, and the pulley will add a little bit of height to this. And we will tighten this up to 60 foot-pounds. I should note, I haven't added oil this because I'm planning on using some blue Loctite at the end of the whole process. Let's get zero degrees top dead center on the compression stroke. The easiest way to find that is going to be with the valve cover off and watching the rockers. So we're going to start off at zero. So if we're top dead center right after the exhaust stroke, we'll see the intake valve open. If we're top dead center on the compression stroke, we'll see neither valve open. So you see the intake valve is opening. That means this is now on the intake stroke and the piston is moving down and bringing air into the cylinder. So now they're both closed. And we are on compression and we'll get it right to zero degrees on the marker. And that is top dead center on the compression stroke. Now we'll pull out the plugs and spark plugs that I used for painting purposes. We'll put some thread sealer on and install the S10 coolant temp sender. The torque spec for this is something like 20 foot-pounds, so get it somewhere in that ballpark. 
and we will come back and reinstall the spark plugs we're going to use a little later. So normally you would leave this plug in since you already have the temp sensor on the other side. I'm gonna leave it like I had it before where it has the S10 temp sender on the passenger side and the V8 style temp sender on the driver's side. That way I can hook up leads to it to very easily check temperature while leaving the gauge connected on the other side. And here's the V8 style button temp sender we're putting in the driver's side. I can put a socket on this one without worrying about breaking it, so I use the torque wrench to tighten this to 20 foot pounds. I've been going through with the razor blade and cleaning up any overspray that made it through my lazy tape job. to help make sure the gaskets seal. So now we're finally ready to add the oil and pre-lube the engine. I threaded on this oil pressure gauge that we're gonna use to check pressure, and we will pop off a valve cover here and fill the oil from in here. The reason you don't wanna just leave the valve covers on, you wanna make sure you can see oil coming out from every single push rod. So when you run a flat tap at cam, you need zinc in your oil. Most generic modern oils don't have zinc. There's some specialty ones that do, but the easiest and cheapest way to go is to get a supplement like this. This supplement could be used during normal oil changes, but it's very concentrated zinc and fantastic for engine braking. So we'll pour in this whole bottle. We'll try to get as much as possible down into the crankcase. but as we pre-lube the engine, this will all get mixed in. For oil, we're just using Walmart 10W40. It's my usual go-to because it is really about as cheap as you can get oil. And we're using 1040, which is a little thicker than the original 1030, which will hopefully help even out our bearing clearance issues. And I'll add maybe just over four quarts of this and we'll see how that goes because I keep ending up overfilling this oil pan. So the tool we're going to be using to run the oil pump is this. This is a pre-lube tool, and you can do it with a screwdriver, but you guys yelled at me last time I did that. And yeah, it needs this section to block off a passage in the block, because if that's not blocked off, it doesn't get oil through all the galleries. So you can either buy a tool like this, I think this was 12 bucks or so, or you can take an old distributor and make your own. I'm just gonna drizzle a little oil down in here. Put a little oil on here. Make sure the whole thing is clean before you do this, before you drop it in your nice clean engine. And get it in there and slot it into the oil pump. And then all we do is turn it with the power drill. I'll start off slow with the valve covers off and try to make sure our oil is coming out of all the push rods. Then we'll put the valve covers back on and really crank it. Okay, let's hit it. It's a bit hard to get started because the assembly lube that we packed in there is so thick, but that should ease up. Okay, we're starting to see some pressure. this tool fits tight enough that it's gonna get oil through here. So we're getting right at 35 psi at, this drill is rated 1200 RPM, it doesn't really sound like that, but even if it is 1200 RPM, that would be 2400 RPM engine speed. <sighs> okay, so we're getting oil on the left side, but not the right side. That means this tool is not correctly blocking that passage. Oh, what a pain. So I took a minute to look at this and uh, pretty quickly realized what was happening. 
This blue piece, which is supposed to close off that oil gallery and let oil get through, is wrong. If you hold it up next to the distributor, it's way wrong. That's why it's not sealing, because this, this top lip isn't even in the right spot. So I don't know if this is for a different but very similar engine, and it was listed wrong, or I don't know what's going on there. But I have an idea. So we knocked out this roll pin, and we should be able to take the tool apart. Yes. So I just measured this, and it looks like we need to take about three-eighths of an inch out of the center here. And what we don't need is for this to be in one piece. So now let's put it back together. We made that spacer by cutting the center section out. And then we have our newly shortened block off. And then we can just pin this back on. If this does work out, I'll come back and JB weld this together. Maybe stick a washer or something in there to take up some of that slack, but theoretically, I think this should work. go. We finally have oil coming out of all of the push rods. And now we have 50 PSI, which is much, much more what you want to see when running a pre -lube like this. So now I'm going to start turning the crank while running the oil pump. Okay, looks like we have good oil flow through everything. We went through at least one full rotation of the crank. I'm gonna let the drill cool down and then run some more through just for the heck of it and to try to get that additive all mixed in, but I think we're in good shape. So this is exactly what you wanna see on both sides of the engine. You wanna see a good steady drip of oil coming off of each one of the rockers. And since this is the top of the oiling system, if you have oil here, it's pretty safe to say you have oil everywhere. Now's the time when you also want to keep an eye on your oil plugs and your drain plug and your oil pan. And just look around and make sure if you have any leaks that you can address them. And now that we finally have good oil pressure and flow, we can install the valve covers for good. So I've already kind of damaged the paint on these valve covers pretty good. Most of it was the masking tape. So the surface under here must have been too smooth because this paint just did not adhere well at all. Um, I t I'm not fixing this right now. I'm just gonna leave it and then I'll probably come back and bedline these later on. Now we can put on the valve cover accessories. The rubber grommets, which by the way, I replaced. The original ones were very, very, uh, stiff and cracked. And the PCV and the little itty bitty breather filter. And now I'm actually gonna take the crank bolt back out so that we have more clearance to get this thing into the engine bay. And the bolt has to go in over top of the accessory pulley anyway. And now we'll reinstall the spark plugs we're actually going to use with a little bit of anti-seize, of course. I have all these gapped to 45. And these get torqued down to 180 inch-pounds. Next, let's get the exhaust manifolds back on. So what I'm going to do is put two bolts through the manifold, hang the gasket on those. And then try to get everything together. Same as the intake manifold bolts, I shortened some of these so that they don't have a whole bunch of washers hanging off of them anymore. These exhaust manifolds had kind of weird bolt lengths and I really wanted all the threads I can get. Now that it's hanging on there, some anti-seize. 
and get all the bolts in with a fair amount of anti-seize on them. And since I cut these, I'm gonna put a little extra anti-seize over the end. And we'll torque those down to 25 foot-pounds. Now that's on there, let's get the other side. Now that those are on, let's get the oil dipstick tube installed. So what I like to do is put a little bit of RTV right on the end of this and it helps everything seal once you insert the tube. Okay, and then we just gotta kind of wiggle it around in there. Since this tube doesn't seem to be a very tight fit, the uh, RTV should help seal everything together. When I modified this tube the first time, I made this little bracket for it so it just hooks onto the valve cover bolt right here. And then I'll just clean up the actual dipstick and install it. This paint is actually a little thicker than I expected, so I'm gonna run the tap through a couple of these painted bolt holes that I'm either gonna use for bolts or especially for the ones I'm gonna use for engine grounds. All right, now let's get the thermostat and thermostat housing installed. So this is the same thermostat that came out of it. It's a 180 degree, and I already have a eighth inch hole drilled in it to help bleed and just to help everything flow. That will mean it'll take a little longer to warm up, but I'm not worried about it. The kind of thermostat that doesn't have a little valve in it like this uh, can be kind of annoying to bleed sometimes, so that just deals with all that. So what I like to do is use the paper gasket, but put a thin, film of RTV on each side of it. And I've never had one of these leak by doing that. And as long as you keep it thin, it's really, it's not hard to clean up later or anything either. And the same thing on the housing side. We'll let this skim over for a minute or two, and then we'll come back and install the thermostat, the gasket, and the housing. So remember, thermostats install with the spring side facing your engine. anti-seize our bolts. Remember I had to drill that out so these are actually 7 sixteenths. Normally they would be 3 eighths. Let it sit there another minute and then start tightening. Sometimes it's nice to install the thermostat housing with the engine installed and the radiator hose is connected because you can fill the engine straight from here pretty quickly with coolant but this time I just kind of want to get all this stuff out of the way first. And especially with that hole, you still can fill the engine with coolant from here, it'll just take longer. We'll torque these down to 25 foot-pounds. Normally you'd have 20, but since these bolts are a little bigger, I figure 25 shouldn't be a problem. Now that's installed. Okay, let's get the new water pump installed. The process is basically the same as the thermostat housing, where we do a bit of RTV, bit of RTV, paper gasket, a little more RTV, and then a water pump. On this engine, three of these are bind holes, and one goes through to the water jacket. So this bolt needs sealant. The other three will be anti-seize. So this setup also has two bolts on this side, a bolt on the lower, and a stud on the upper here. And I honestly can't remember if part of the accessory bracket used this stud. I'll reinstall it. It's okay if it's not used. So I basically just smeared a little tiny bit of RTV on both sides of these gaskets. Just kind of stick them on there. Okay, so that RTV is set for a little while. Now let's try to get this bolted on here. I'm moving them around too much. Those get torqued to 30 foot-pounds. Okay, so there's the water pump installed. Next up comes the accessory bracket. I painted this with the same black used for the valve covers. We 
We'll go through and torque the whole thing to 30 foot-pounds. And we'll torque the smaller ones, the metric ones here, to 25 foot-pounds. Yes, I'm putting the AC compressor back on because I'm too cheap to buy an idler to replace it. It's a bit ugly, but I really don't think there's any draw on the system since it rotates so easily and the clutch is just never being turned on. And here comes the tensioner using another bolt that I shortened. And we'll install this idler and torque that to let's say 35 foot pounds. Everything spins nice and easy. And next up is the power steering pump. So this is actually not the same pump that we took out. This is the pump from the 4.3 liter that came on this S10. It had been using the pump that came on the engine, but bearing it felt really bad and there are some kind of weird power steering issues so I'm wondering if it wasn't going out. The bearing in this one feels much much better and I know it's set up right in the truck because the power steering worked perfectly before. These three bolts get torqued to 35 foot-pounds. Now we get to play with the power steering pulley again. That was so fun last time. I had to clean out the snout pretty good. It was not there's not a good place in there. I threaded this into the puller, put this bearing on it, screw that in. I've oiled the uh, inside of the pulley, and I think that's about all there is to it. Hopefully this installs without heat, but I'm ready to get the torch out if I got it. This pulley came off of this pump much more easily than the one that I had to do in the video. Okay, that seems about right. Yep, the pulley is flush with the snout of the power steering pump. That is installed. So we won't actually be installing these two pulleys until later, but I would like to test fit them just to make sure the alignment of everything is still correct. Yep, yeah, looks like everybody still lines up. Perfect. And so, just like that, it's finally back to the state it came out of the truck in. Which means, I guess the next step is to get it back in the truck. <laughs>